Hello, hello, this is Arcades, and welcome back to another build episode here on Stormworks Build and Rescue. And uh, as you can see, we're flying in the uh, <laughs> frame right now. We'll just call it that for the time being. Uh, so yeah, last time we ended up getting the engines, uh, or we got the, to work in plane mode. And uh, so what we're going to do this time around is we're going to fine tune. I want to work on the engines and get some of their systems. Right now, it just has enough to get it working. And what I want to do is get, um, see what performance I can get out of them. <clears throat> and see if I can solve a few other issues. And yeah, so eventually I will get to the body of this thing. But right now, this propulsion is still, is still key on what we need to fix. So, get it working right. I know what I want to do. I have plans. And then, uh, yeah. We'll fix on the uh, rest of stuff. I do know I want to get you all taken care of for helicopter form, for the helicopter mode. And uh, we'll get that smoothed out. And also the transition. Because I have a particular issue with how it likes to transition from helicopter to plane. Of course it doesn't do it. <laughs> uh, it likes to act all jerky that i want to fix that i don't like it nosing up like that i think i know what's causing it and i'm planning to address that so all right so uh hope you like what you watch hope you enjoy what you see if you do like subscribe leave a comment tell me what you think and uh yeah let's get to this okay okay so uh one of the things i want to address is i want to be able to do this and we bring a plane up to full speed However, to do that, we need to make sure we have engines that can actually handle that. Which means we need to make sure they can cool. So, uh, yeah, this should be uh, somewhat interesting. Okay, so we're here in the workbench, and right now the first thing I want to take care of is the converting to the engines to flip forward for the time being, and I want to get them to where they will rotate smoothly and I'm not having that big, like, upward nosing up. Because what's happening is, uh, it originally said so it flipped straight to one on the, on, the collect, on the collective, that I would go straight to one collective, so since they're pointing straight up, they pull the aircraft straight up, and they have greater power than the rotation. So what I need to do is reduce the collective down to a certain point so that the engines can rotate and keep the vehicle level and then once they read a certain rotation re-engage the collective to full power and that's what we're going to set up now to do this uh i am going to turn first we're going to turn that off because i only need one we're going to grab a threshold block i'm going to just put that right here we're going to want a switch, two switch boxes, one here, one there. We're going to need a constant on, or a constant number, not a constant on. And we'll just put that right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this constant on, constant on, constant number, we're going to put it in the on value there, and I'm going to put the value as one. Then we're going to take the threshold gate, we'll put it to there, so that we'll trigger that. Then we're going to grab this rotation sensor, we will put that one there. We're going to mark this as 0.26, or actually 2.4 for the low end of the rotation, and point. To six, so we know we cover the point to five that is the available thing. Uh, the reason why I'm picking that, if we come over here to the pivots, you know, the fluid pivot, it says has a range of motion of point two five turns in both directions. So that means what it's reading is between point 
0.25. Now, however, I noticed with these that if you put just 0.25 in there, it doesn't catch it. Sometimes it sits at 0.24999 repeating. So if you go from 0.24 to 0.26, you're covering the spectrum and you're getting it. So now with that, then we take this input. This is the, uh, this is the general collective input. This is the input showing for uh, the prop for plane form. So we're going to put that in the on value. We're going to grab this value and we're going to go straight to the collective with this. Both cases. This will go to the VTOL button, which is number six right there. And then for the inputs on the off side, we are just going to take the collective and put it straight into there. So that way, we have the collective from the gyro coming into here. And when it's off, in other words, in the default state, it just passes right through and goes straight to the collectives. Once it goes to the plane form, once the these have achieved their positioning, they, by leaning forward, it will uh, trigger. And I'm actually going to speed them up a little. We're going to go to 1.5. Like that. All right, now we're going to spawn it in. Don't mind the wave. Now, the reason why those are wobbling so fast is because I sped them up. I will be dealing with that in a moment, so... Okay, so, and then we just hit 6. And you saw it kind of tilted back, and it dropped a little. I kind of sped them up so that it would try to hopefully reduce the amount of time it would do that drop, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this back. Now, if I want to reduce that amount of time that it's dropped while still giving it some, you know, movement, I could grab another one of these. Say, put that there. Or actually, let me do this. Let me get rid of that. I have this microcontroller here. This will serve the same purpose. Using this as the trigger, we're just taking that over there instead. And what I do is on the on state, it's 1. On the closed state, I could put, put like, you know, maybe 0.3. So that when it's not reaching that value, it grabs, it, it has a little bit of collective in there. Okay, so we come in here. Get started real quick. And that actually smoothed it out really well. So I think I'm happy with it at that point. That was actually a pretty good, pretty smooth transition. Because when it transitions back to this way, it's got the collective from the gyro. When I go this way, and you see it does it smoothly, There's, it does lean up a little bit, but that's just due to the balance and the lack of power. I could probably increase it a little bit, but uh, for now, it is what it is. I do intend to put a collective in there, control, and that'll replace... <laughs> that'll replace the constant number but until then that's what i'm gonna... now i want to deal with the yaw issue or with those engines and the rotating they are very very aggressive now i have a clamp here we're getting rid of those they are not actually what i want to use so we're going to grab a function block small function block right here and then we're going to take Our 
These are going to go into there, like in this manner. We're also taking this, put that in there, and there, and getting rid of this invert block right there. So we don't need it. Actually, I'm just going to disconnect it. <laughs> okay, so we don't need that anymore because the inversion is going to come from this function block. Now, what we're going to do overall is we're going to reduce the overall movement by multiplying the input by 0.3. So we will only be taking 30% of what's given to it to work. So that means even with the, you know, the gyro doing its thing, we're only going to be taking 30% of the value. So that should slow it down and make it a little bit less jittery. So first we need to invert. So that's going to be negative X. Now we need to multiply it by, you know, 30%. So we're just going to take 0.3. And that will take care of that side. Now for the opposite side, since we don't have to invert this one, we're just taking X, which is the input, and multiplying that by 0.3. Straightforward. That's all we need. And yeah, yes, I know. I gotta fix that still. As you can see, that works. Okay, I just respawned it, and so we'll have fixed rotors. Turn on this. You notice a lot less jittery. So, and then six. I know, I know, I still gotta take care of that back end. <laughs> that will be eventually. Come back to here. Forward. Back. Until forward. Everything's a lot smoother. I don't think I can completely get rid of the... Uh, some of the dipping, but that's the best I can do for now for adjusting it. Because the rest I want to do when I got a full body on here. Because then I'll be taking the weight into account. Blah, 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 blah. So, alright. Now, let's get to the engines. Okay, so now what I want to do is upgrade these motors. They're specifically their cooling system. Because I want to be able to push this to a full like 20 rps or greater to be able to lift stuff because when i say i want this to be a thing to be a heavy lift i mean it all right so make sure i don't have issues with this thing we're just gonna make it sit forced into the ground And we're gonna look at the temperature. Now the only thing is, is while these generally work pretty well under low pressure situations, yeah, we need to... So at eight RPS, yes, I know it's a little under according to this. As you can see, you can generally tell an engine is getting close to its operating temperature because when the digit becomes readable, uh, how can I? So, uh, nope, I don't have my mouse. Okay, so as you see, the six, the first spot is like readable, meaning you can see it changing, but it's readable. This next position is not so readable because it's just turning, 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 turning. So we want, we want to make this operate better. So the other thing is we got to figure out what it works at. So at eight, you know, that's fine operating temperature. But we're talking. Let's crank it up to 12. And now, yeah, you see how that second position past the decimal, the hundredth place, is just unreadable? I want to get to the point where that's readable. 
As you see, we're already at 70 degrees. Let alone, like, trying to take it to 20. Let alone 20 RPS. As you can see, that number's climbing. We've hit the 90s. We keep going. It's obviously going to get really close, and it's just going to blow up. So, we want to fix that. So the first upgrade I want to do is we're going to upgrade the radiator. And uh, yeah, so we're going to get rid of this. We're going to grab a 3x3 electric radiator. Put that on right there. And let's take a look at that. Alright, so you can see we're straight to 20 RPS. And notice already, it's cranking up still. I mean... It's working, but I think it needs just a little something else, a little bit more help. So now our fluid flow has increased to 64. We got another extra 20 flow out of that. That makes a difference. As you see, we broke 60, but look at the first spot. It's slowing down a lot. So we're already doing better by having those two pumps. I know one more little push. Hopefully we should get it over the edge and see how this works. Okay, so what I'm going to add might uh, be interesting for a few people, but uh, I like how these work generally. So I am going to grab a air liquid exchanger. I like the 5x2s. They're pretty effective. And we're just going to stab it right there. Okay, so here we go. Now, as you see, it's running 20 RPS again. And it's already slowing down in the 50s. And you see, the 10th place is already becoming a lot more readable. And we have a working cooling setup and let's see we even have 40 going here in and out what how is and there you go 60 we are running at 20 rps at 60 now, I have one more little experiment I want to do, and we're going to try to push this system and see if it can handle it. Okay, so the thing is about these prefab engines, they come, when you go to look at them, they come in with this RPS limiter. And right now it's set at 20, the, so the engine won't go faster than that. Well, I'm going to move this up to 30. And this was the reason for this extra system to get the extra air you know cooling on it now the thing is now i got to adjust one other thing now that i've adjusted these i've got to adjust this to take an account for the max rps now being 30. And there we go, RPS of 29.9. Coolant is moving quick. But look at the temperature. It's high, don't get me wrong. It's not that far from, you know, I don't know if we could take it to like Myers and run it for at that temperature for a long time, but I think we could keep it under 100. Like, it's only an extra 15 degrees for this extra, or it looks like maybe an extra 20 for this extra uh, 10 RPS on the thing. So, alright, I want to make one more experimental, one more experiment and uh, see if we can get this, how this can get interesting. 
Okay, so I added a little extra and messed with it a little bit, and I finally came out to having a 60 liter flow for the air and a 75 liter flow for the engine coolant. And you can see it is at almost 30 RPS, and it is banging at 76 degrees. I mean, it's slowly climbing, but as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's pretty much solid. So this is what we're going to end up sitting at. However, the thing is, is 30 RPS is only meant as an emergency because look at that oil fuel consumption. Oh my god, it is eating it alive. Alright, so one more the thing to check. Now, uh, now to deal with that back end, one of the things we can do is just bring this down. I th I'm going to try 40% for now. We're going to add a speed sensor. And you can see, uh, the tail thing has kind of gone down a little bit. But we'll be fine. Alright, now, speed sensor, you see, we're currently doing 124 meters a second. Now, and that's at 8 RPS. Looks like we're capping out at 169. So right now, 12 is the max speed-wise. Yeah, and that number, and we're going to take that 169, multiply it by 3.6, and that's 608 kilometers an hour. So, yeah. <laughs> that's how fast we're currently going. Okay, so that's where we're going to leave it off again. Um, yeah, we didn't actually add anything to the body. I know. Uh, however, we got the engine sorted out a little bit more. And I think I'm pretty much done with getting the control schemes around. I might, like I said, I still want to knock everything into a micro troll, and I'll probably do that later at some point on my own. Because I want to get all those blocks cleaned up. But I like to do that with the blocks, you know, the logic blocks. So that I can lay out stuff and get it all planned out. Because it's a lot quicker than going in and out of my controller constantly. So, we got the engines taken care of. We've got their cooling systems tuned. Uh, able to get them some extra power out of them and it, even though I couldn't get much faster it's going to be more relevant when we get the actual body built and we get all that weight and then on top of that being able to use that power to lift stuff so that's the whole point and the premise of all that so yeah all right uh so yeah I uh, hope you like what you watch. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you do, you know the spiel. You know the deal. This is Arcades, signing out. Have yourself a good day.